Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Micah Meyer here to teach you today five things that elegant women do. Now, I have worked with thousands of women from all over the world throughout many cultures, and there are five things that women, no matter where they're from, do that instantly make them look more elegant. Now, I teach a finishing program in person and also one online, which you can check out. I'll link to it here. But also, it's something that today, what I'm teaching you are just five easy tips to implement immediately that can change your profile. If you start doing them now, can instantly make you feel more confident, look more confident, and other people around you will start to notice rather soon after you implement these that you look a bit more elegant, a little bit more polished, and it's really easy to do. Let's get started. The first thing that elegant women do, they always have a handbag that's appropriate for the occasion and never overstuffed. So for example, if you are going to a dinner post 6 p.m., that means a small handbag. You're not bringing a huge handbag to a dinner like that. But also, if you do have a handbag, let's say you're going to work or a meeting, it's not overstuffed. So an elegant woman walks with a bag that is zipped or closed and doesn't have a sneaker popping out or a shopping bag coming out. Elegant women only carry one bag at a time. You never see or notice a beautiful, elegant woman walking down the street with a gym bag and a backpack and a carry-all and her handbag. She has one bag, she's very organized, and when she's put together like that, you never see that overstuffed bag. Now, years ago, I before I went to finishing school myself, I was stopped by a man in the street. And this is a very embarrassing thing I still remember. And he was beautifully dressed. It was when I was living in London in probably 2008. And he said, you are a very elegant woman. And I said, oh, thank you. What a beautiful compliment. And he was a beautifully dressed man, well, a little bit older. And he said, can I give you a tip? <laughs> and I said, sure, not knowing where this was going. He said, you know the giveaway? And I said, no. I was so confused and he said, your outfit is beautiful, but your bag is so overstuffed. And I looked, I was instantly mortified because he was right. I had sneakers coming out. I had rolled up a sweater that I had just taken off from the gym. I had a folder kind of rolled up and sticking out. It was so overstuffed, it couldn't zip, it couldn't, and I had jammed everything in there. Now, it was horrible etiquette on his part to point that out because that just makes somebody feel insecure and he didn't know me, so there, but I still remember it and I learned from that moment and he was right at the end of the day. Now, don't ever say that to somebody, please, but and I'm taking this as a positive and a lesson that I learned in my 20s that then I implemented from that day forward. So elegant women don't overstuff their bags. Number two, elegant women choose one when it comes to skin. What do I mean by this? When you're choosing your outfit, either you're showing skin up here or skin on the legs, but not both at the same time. So rarely will you see someone that is very elegant looking that is showing too much skin. Now, I love confident women. Yes, show off an asset. I am all for something like that. If you love your legs, be proud of them. If you love your shoulders, you love your arms, be proud of them. I love it. But showing too much skin leaves nothing to the imagination and does not, in the end, look very elegant. So in this case, for instance, today I'm wearing a silk blouse up here and it's a dress that's a little shorter on the bottom. So I feel confident and still elegant wearing this dress even though it comes slightly above my knee. Now, if this was a long dress and you know went down to my calf or down to my ankle, then I'd be fine if it showed a little shoulder or you know it was sleeveless or something like that. So elegant women choose one. Number three thing that elegant women consistently do, their manicures. 
So elegant women will always have manicured hands. Now, do you have to have your nails painted? No, I'm talking about manicure. When I say manicure, that's actually genderless when I recommend manicures, but manicures, it's a hard thing because it's probably a smaller detail when you're getting ready or self-care, self-love that you pay attention to, but people talk with their hands, people notice their hands when you're gesturing to something, flipping through a page at work, whatever it might be, socially going through a calendar, a diary to write something in, people notice your hands. You're writing a signature on a credit card authorization, whatever it is, people notice your fingers and your fingernails and your hands. So if you have scraggly cuticles, it's almost like you didn't care enough to take care of yourself and all these beautiful details of yourself that should and do deserve attention. So, you know, you just really didn't care and, and that's that. Women who really care about themselves, who really pay meticulous attention, will have a good manicure. So again, it doesn't mean polish, but if you have polish, there's no chips, you have nice clean fingernails, cuticles, everything is nice and manicured. Now, I personally love a good nail polish. Uh, I choose shades of rose as what I stick with in terms of colors, colorscapes that I think are always elegant. But also, if you really want to impress yourself, everyone around you with your elegance, then match your fingernails to your toenail color. So if you have red nails, you should have red toenails when it comes to the most polished, finished, elegant look. Because red toenails with fluorescent pink or blue toenails or whatever it is, I'm just giving an extreme example there, but let's say red toenails with a you know a different color nail it kind of is jarring you notice it rather than a slick beautiful consistent color so elegant women pay attention to the small details including their manicures now if you're watching this and you think i just can't afford to have regular manicures that's not practical for me it doesn't matter where or who does your manicure do them at home. Go to the drugstore and just buy a manicure kit. You need a brush to clean under your nails. Often that comes with it. You can buy one at the 99 cent store or online. They're very, very inexpensive. And then you want to get a nail file, which usually you, know, you can get for under a dollar as well and then i want you to get some cuticle scissors or some nail clippers and really with those alone you can do a lot a bonus would be if you have a buffer for your nails um, which then kind of cleans the surface and gives you this nice polished finish so it's called a nail buffer and those things together you can give yourself manicures at home even if you don't like your nails polished sometimes a clear nail polish is something that always just get, adds a little polish and looks a little bit more elegant than you know nothing on your nails for you. Um, but if you do choose not to nail, wear nail polish, it's absolutely okay. But remember, a good manicure is nice, cuticles under cleaned under nails and a nice clean shape, not rackety, rigidy edges and things like that. So manicure you can do at home, you can get professionally done, it doesn't matter. But a good manicure is what elegant women typically have. Next. Elegant women have exceptional manners. That means they say thank you after they're treated for lunch. That means they say it's so wonderful to see you and they make people feel good when they first enter a room. They compliment people. They're nice to other people. There's no mean girls when you meet really, truly elegant women. They don't make you feel a certain way or put you down or say negatives. Elegant women uh, are confident and therefore want to spread confidence to other women. So elegant women have exceptional manners from dining skills to you know making sure you bring a host gift when you go to someone's home. That is exceptional. Um, those are examples of exceptional manners. Now, if you want to learn more about manners, I have many other YouTubes from how to hold your silverware correctly to what to bring to someone's home. So make sure to check those out. But elegant women have exceptional manners. One example of exceptional manners is a friend of mine, dear friend of mine now, who at the time, when I met her probably 15 years ago, she was an editor at Tatler Magazine. Her name is Mariella Tandy. And she was somebody I had taken out for lunch for business. And she, you know, we went out, it was an early lunch. And of course she said, thank you. She was so gracious. And then I remember it was maybe two days later on my 
I was sitting at my desk at work and the mail came and there was a beautiful piece of stationery monogrammed with her initials that arrived on my desk saying thank you for such a wonderful lunch. So that means she must have gotten back from our lunch, written that handwritten thank you note on her beautiful monogram stationery and within less than 48 hours, it was already on my desk. So it was tangible, it wasn't just a text, it was something that landed there in front of me and a lot of people don't write thank you notes anymore. So if you do, it, it's added impact, it's added emphasis. And I just remember being so blown away by her fantastic manners and she is so elegant and exceptional in every way, but it just showed everything about her. So remember that. And finally, number five in terms of things that elegant women do, they are slow and graceful with their movements. What do I mean by that? From walking down a staircase to walking down a street in heels or flats to telling a story. And instead of saying, oh, and I went to you know Macy's and then I ran to Bergdorf and I couldn't find anything to buy. Instead saying, I went to Macy's and then I went to Bergdorf. I couldn't find anything to buy. But it's okay because in the end, I found the perfect gift online. So you see, instead of those manic gestures, those movements that stress you out, make you feel, whew, I'm just slowing my movements down to become instantly more graceful, more elegant in my mannerisms. So just remember that, practice that in front of a mirror. See what it looks like. Take out your phone, put on the video function, and see what you look like when you tell a story, when you're talking to camera. It's a great thing to use your hands. It's a sign of confidence and authority. But if you're using them in a way that becomes almost, whoa, jarring or distracting, you're doing the opposite. So think about the most graceful person you know and implement their movements. The way they kind of glide down a staircase, move through a crowd, network, turn to the side. They're not turning to the side very, whew, they're, oh, hello. So lovely to see you, how are you? Oh, I remember the last time we saw each other, you were in, uh, was it Colorado? Yes, how was it? So I'm using these, you know, I'm not doing this and saying, how was your trip to Colorado? I heard it was great. You know, you can use a little bit more enthusiasm, but you're not doing the manic hand movements with your asking that person about their recent trip. So remember that. So elegance equals slow, graceful movements. And you can start implementing that immediately and people will notice it right away. It's something that, you know, it, it also comes with posture and holding yourself and not slouching over when you're moving around or, you know, walking or, or talking or networking. So on that note, those are five things that you can start doing today to look more elegant and feel more confident. Now, next week we are talking about style. So style is something that says everything about a person. Teaching somebody about style and how to have elegant, great style, different style mistakes to avoid, uh, what to look for and everything in between will help you look and feel more confident. And really by having good style and elegant style, you're teaching people, you're telling people how to address you. So tune in next week, subscribe so you get the videos first and I cannot wait to see you then. On that note, thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.